Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. So if you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon, today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Ad Astra. It's been a little while and I want to jump right back into it. Um, I've gotten playing so many VMs right now, good lord. <laughs> There's just so much content for me to get through, guys. I'm trying my best, I'm trying my best, I'm just one person, I'm just one dragon. Anyway, guys, let's jump right back into it. Um, Amicus had just abducted us in his little spaceship, his little Roman spaceship. <laughs> really, really interesting. But anyway, guys, here we go. Let's jump right back into it. Alarm chain, you're up. All right. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> yeah. It's not the best. Actually, I had some good food on it that I brought along with me, but I ate it all before I got here. The wolf shrugs and settles excitedly into his seat. So, tell me about where you're from. What's life like back on Earth? Um, it's okay. Okay, well, what's your occupation? I I'm a student. Oh, what discipline? I try to adjust to the surreal feeling of talking to this wolf. I don't know yet. I was looking into history, Greek and Roman studies. Hmm. That seems confusing to him for some reason. Do you have an emperor? What's he like? I catch myself, staring at his mouth again, at the weird way his mouth is unsynced with his words. No. Then how? I interrupt him. Why isn't your mouth matching up with the sounds you're making? Eh? Even with the spaceship and alien around me, it's the weird distortion of feeling like I'm watching a dubbed movie that has me most unsettled. Oh! Amicus points a finger at me to a spot just above my left eye. I gave you a lingua. It helps you understand me. I stare at him, but he doesn't, but he doesn't offer anything more. How? Oh, well, it uh, sort of attaches to the language center in the brain. It's very smart. It learns from the host brain and is able to interpret the eight major gal galaxies' languages for them. And how does it do that? Oh, well, our brains are structured in similar ways, at least among sapiens, so it works almost universally. Honestly, it's parental tech, so I'm not fully sure of how it works. None of us do, but it does work. Amicus, Amicus continues to look at me, clearly concerned about something. But I'm concerned, too. How did you get it into my brain? Uh... You know, you ask a lot of questions. I stare at him. Well, this is all kind of new to me. Should I not be asking questions? It's fine. I've just never had a child ask me questions, really. Anyway, there's a device that inserts it. I was lucky to find one left over on the ship. Inserts it? I rub the spot between my eyes and my eye socket, the skin slightly tender. Does it hurt? That should wear off in a few hours. I stare at Amicus for a few moments and down into my cup, feeling a bit sick. Staring at the brown mush isn't helping. Need help with that? You can eat it like this. He dips his muzzle down towards the cup. He sticks out a long, thick pink tongue, pressing it to the sludge before cupping it and bringing it, up, bringing it back up to his mouth. He pulls a bit of a face before smiling. Oh, one second. <coughs> oh, goodness. <coughs> oh, good lord. Oh, wow, you guys are getting sneezes like all month long. How lucky. Oh, man. Okay. See? Not terrible. Then he looks at me a bit closer. Wait, you do have a tongue, right? I stare back at him for a moment before setting the cup to the side on the armrest. What are you doing? Huh? What is all this? Where are you taking me? At this point, I'm starting to get over the shock. I'm also starting to get annoyed at this alien's complete disregard for basically everything to do with me. You kidnapped me, you left me in a closet, you're feeding me what looks like shit, and now you tell me you jabbed something into my brain? Amicus actually flinches at that. D d does it still hurt? I, I can give you a pain manager. I don't really want anything from you. What is all of this? The wolf just stares at me, wide-eyed. It's like he didn't even consider me being capable of being upset. Hey, it's, it's okay. You kidnapped me! I feel myself getting more panicked, both from the realization of what's happened and what's currently happening. No, well, I mean... You, like, tased me or something? What? You electrocuted me! No, it's not electricity. That doesn't make it better! For a brief moment, I think about overpowering this wolf, somehow turning the ship around if I can figure it out. Sensing hostile... Sensing hostile intent. Proceed with caution, Amicus. Amicus doesn't say anything, and I see him gripping into his cup tightly. I get the odd feeling that I didn't expect me to point these things out to him. Did he think that I was that unintelligent? I can tell that he's calculating something in his head right now, and that makes me nervous. Maybe I should just have played dumb. We stare at each other for a long while until Amicus' steely gaze forces me to look away. I choose to glance up at the ceiling, deciding to change the subject and give myself some time to just think. What is that thing? 
Emiko's clears his throat. What? That voice. I nod up at the ceiling in a vague direction where I heard the sound come from. The thing that can apparently sense my hostile intent. Oh! Amicus looks up at the ceiling, too. <laughs> That's Computatrum, or Com. He's pretty annoying. Marjicom. I can provide diagnostics on the ship on the mood and competence of crewmates on... Thank you, Com. Anyway, he's not actually a sapien. He's a program that can process language and spit out information stored in his database. Amicus pauses. I'm sorry, you probably don't understand what I'm talking about. Uh, I think I do. Artificial intelligence, maybe? I reach instinctively for the pocket of my jeans, but I remember that I left my phone on the bedside table. Amicus' eyes widen once again, and I again I wonder if I should be keeping my mouth shut. Revealing how much I know seems to be sort of a trigger for him. Ah, so you have been in space before. Um, no. I look out the window, staring at the stars. Okay, have your people ever been to space? Uh, no. N no, we have. Yes, yes, you have. You've been in space. The, the human race has been in space. Uh, n n no, we haven't. Do you know what atoms are? Nuclear energy, maybe? No. Based on Nexus analysis on Earth, these statements appear to be misleading, Amicus. I glance at the ceiling again, realizing now that I've got a constant spy above me. I look back at Amicus, and we stare at each other in silence for a long moment. Then I realize how absurd all this is. What do you want with me? Amicus looks away, seeming to think. Well, it's it's part of a program on my planet to introduce new aliens to the, galac to the galaxies. What is that? It's the greater galactic civilization, Killian. It's a gradual strategy to slowly introduce Earth to the idea of other sapiens. Oh, is this happening to other humans? Yes. I contemplate this for a moment. And when you're done showing me, you'll take me back? There's a momentary pause that I don't like very much. Y yes. I imagine that I'd hear those these statements appear to be misleading from Akam right now if he were on my side. I look into my cup of brown sludge again. Well, to be honest, I'm not all that interested, so could you just take me back now? Amicus stares at me. I've got school and, and a family. They don't know where I am right now. Uh, uh I, I mean, don't you want to see the galaxy? I, I really think that would be it would be amazing for someone like you that hasn't seen it before. Wilf starts fidgeting with his paws, not looking at me, choosing to stare out the windows. He isn't wrong. It would be pretty cool to see the galaxy, but not with someone like him who kidnapped me, taking me somewhere for a reason that he isn't telling me. No. No, I actually want to go home right now. Emika stares at me for a full ten seconds before looking away. How about we wait until we get to my home, and then we can discuss it? No. Take me back. I feel my heart hammering in my chest as I start to realize that this alien is definitely not going to take me back. I stand up and Amicus flinches and brings his paws up to his chest as if I'm going to attack him. Oh my god, what is that, Kung Fu? We stay like that for a moment. I'm breathing hard, staring down at the wolf while Amicus stares, stares back up at me, wide-eyed. Oh, he's shorter, okay. Finally, Amicus lets out a big sigh, looking back at the window. Okay, I'm going to take you back, I'm sorry. I watch him for a moment, looking for signs of sincerity, but he still won't look at me. Really? Yes, but it's complicated. We're, uh... On a trajectory for an Astra. It'll take time for us to turn around. I keep watching him, not sure what to do. I feel like he's lying, but if he but if he is, there's really nothing I can do about it. I'm stuck here with him, probably millions of miles from Earth, with no way of knowing how to get back. So I just stand there, arms folded tightly against my chest, staring out the window, too. That's when I see a star brighter than all the others, almost too bright to look at. Is that the sun? The what? I is that my star, my planet's star? Emika squints in the direction I'm looking at. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's your star. I can't remember the name we have for it. It's a bunch of numbers. How far away are we? Not that far. We could get back there in no time. Emika stands up next to me, seeming to stretch. So, are we going back? Yeah, yeah, just gotta do it in a way that doesn't waste too much energy. I still have to get back to Ad Astra after all. I stare in the direction of the sun again, my gaze slightly averted from the piercing dot. How long has it been since I got since I was kidnapped? Yeah, I wonder if my friends have alerted the school, or even the authorities. How am I going to explain this? There's a movement to my right, and just as I'm turning to look, something cold presses the side, into the side of my neck. A familiar sensation of my muscles tightening up makes me slam back into the seat. At the same time, my mind seems to wipe clean, empty. Suddenly, I'm surrounded by soft and warm gray fur. I feel like a limp blanket as I'm flopped around. My muscles are like jelly. It's not a bad feeling, and in fact, I kind of feel great. I would smile if my facial muscles were working. 
I'm laid on the ground and then my arms are pushed behind me. Something starts to wind around my wrists. Still detecting consciousness from the human. Insufficient charge used. I use it on the lowest setting. I think I hit him with too much last time. Looks like he's mostly out anyway, though. I hear ragged breathing in my ears. My arms are jerked around. Damn it, he's more safe than any child I've known. Sensing distress. Would you like a stress tablet, Amicus? Maybe even as intelligent as a wolf. Well, almost. If they've been to space and they're part, then they're, then they're far past level five. I try to open my eyes, but the eyelids are too heavy to lift. Maybe level ten? My brain isn't really working either. I can't seem to focus. The padded footsteps move around my head. Then I hear what sounds like an alarm, followed by something I can't really explain. My mind startles as that deep voice starts up again. What do I do now? I've messed this up as badly as I could have. Solutions, Com? Solutions. Consider returning the human back to Earth. If no evidence is left behind, it is unlikely his statements would be believed. Uh, too late for that since I just activated the stretch drive. Yes, that was inadvisable. Yeah, well, I don't know how advanced this species is. If he was being misleading, then that means they're spacefaring. They could have patrols in their star system. I wanted to get out as soon as possible, you know. You know you could have offered the solution before I did that. You've sent me to minimal interruptions. Next solution. Consider termination of the human and incineration of the remains through the radiation of the stretch drive. Edipal! No! Next solution! Consider taking the human to Adastra and use him as your pet as you originally planned. From there, you may pass him off as less sapient. It is unlikely you will be questioned. I don't know. He's already he already despises me after what I just did to him. Amicus, alternative solutions point to a higher likelihood that the monitors will be alerted to your actions. Oh, someone's doing illegal shit. Proceed with caution. Come, please wait the last ten minutes of conversation. Then go into sleep mode until I wake you. I need to think. Wiping memory. Entering sleep mode. A few more moments of silence go by and I feel a wave of fatigue. I start to fall asleep. The padded footsteps move, clo move closer to me and I feel a presence looming. And something heavy and soft rests on my forearm. I'm sorry, this, this was a mistake. Then I'm dragged for a short while before I come to rest on something shaggy and soft. Then, silence. Then sleep. Huh. I float in a void of nothingness, not even blackness, nothingness. The feeling of having no sense of self, the boundaries of my being having no boundaries, it makes me panic. I'm still here, but nothing else exists. Am, am I all there is? I feel the borders of my sanity start to bend and break. It only lasts a moment before something massive and all-encompassing grabs hold of me. Instantly I'm comforted, calmed by a sense of complete security. All is as it should be. Mm, excuse me. I crack my eyes open to a gray ceiling, the familiar hum of the ship in my ears. My back aches as I feel my hands bunched up bunched up underneath me, making me arch uncomfortably. The numbness isn't there like last time. Instead it just feels like I woke up from a deep sleep. I can I can tell I'm back in the utility closet laying on the shag rug, but the door is open, allowing me to actually see. Slowly I turn my head just a bit, and I'm able to vaguely make out the small deck that I'd just been in. I see Amicus to the far right, both his paws resting on the counter with the food dispenser, looking down at a panel. He's got his back to me at an angle, one foot crossed behind the other, his tail swishing back and forth while he mumbles to himself. As slowly as I can, I turn over onto my side, trying not to let out a groan of relief as my back and hands are relieved of pressure. I grimace through the pain of having blood rushed back into my fingers. That's when I realize that my hands are tied to the wrists behind my back with a cord of some kind. The ends of it dangle through my fingers and it feels smooth and metallic. Some slow movements with my hands tell me immediately that they haven't been tied well. My left hand is fairly secure, but the loop around my right is loose. I get the feeling that if I pull hard enough, I might be able to slip it, and just like that it comes out. My shoulder jerks when I do it, and I freeze, waiting to see if Amicus might notice. He goes on staring down at the panel, leaning forward to rest his chin on a fist. Cassius is probably going to figure it out right away, I know it. Amicus sighs and hunches over further. Without the breath, I'm holding as quietly as I can before I start looking around, moving my head as little as possible. On the shelves are a variety of different objects that I can't identify. They all have a heavy industrial look to them, and I know that I could use any of them as a weapon. There's a long, pipe-like object at the end of the bottom shelf, and I imagine hefting that in both hands, bringing the end of it down on the top of the stupid wolf's. Amicus suddenly straightens up, and I stiffen, closing my eyes. I hear the wolf move, padding in my direction. That continues until there's a pause, and I can feel his presence standing in the doorway. I crack open an eye, just a tiny bit to see what he might be doing. 
get a vague image of him standing over me, looking down. Hello? Uh, human. Uh, Killian? I don't move when I breathe as evenly as I can. Hello? He must know I'm awake. I can feel myself shaking from all the tension. Damn it! Amicus mumbles to himself as he turns away, moving back towards the deck. That's when I realize that this might be my best chance to make my move. He's not going to take me back. He's knocked me out twice, and that's the reason enough to do what I'm about to do. As quiet as I can, as I, can I roll over and reach out for the metal pipe. He's going to sense you. By some miracle, I manage not to clang it against the metal it rackets on. Quietly, I bring it up in both hands as I stand. It's heavy, a lot heavier than I expected, but I can manage it. I focus on retreating on the treating wolf's back and move, into, in, and move at a half run. My bare feet allowing me a quietly pad, to, pad toward him. Despite that, I see his ears come up to the last second. His body starting to shift in a way that tells me he's about to turn around. And I swing. What happens next is something that I can't explain. I aim for his head, wanting to cause as much damage as possible. Not really thinking about the consequences of what might happen if I seriously injure or even kill him. But for some inexplicable reason, the trajectory of my swing suddenly dips down, as if caused by some invisible magnet, making me miss Amicus's head. A strange force doesn't lessen the power of my swing, though, and it carries through to the land with a hard, meaty thump into the side of the wolf's thick neck. Gah! Amicus cringes, both paws moving to cover the back, of, the back and side of his neck, dropping into a crouch. He looks back at me, his eyes wide and wild, an expression that sends a shot of fear into my body. I suddenly see him as a wild animal, a wild, scared, and very angry animal. I raise the pipe again, over my head to bring down on the head I just missed. But Amicus is fast. He leaps up from the crouch in an upward and forward motion straight into my chest. I wheeze but manage to stay on my, on my feet as the wolf carries me backwards to slam against the wall of the deck. Amicus snarls into my face, teeth bared, one eye wincing shut. I struggle but there's no way. He handles me like a rag doll, like a toy. This must be how someone feels during a wild animal attack. Completely helpless, suddenly wondering why evolution left us so damn defenseless. What the hell are you doing? Ah! Emicus yells at me as he lets go of one of my wrists and puts a paw to his neck, cringing as he does. Damn it! I struggle with my freed hand, grabbing Amicus's face and trying to gouge his eyes and nose. The wolf immediately lets go of his neck and grabs the pipe. He wrenches it away, but I try to hold on and almost get lifted off my feet. He swings it one way, then violently the other, the other direction, throwing me to the floor of the deck as I lose my grip on the weapon. Amicus advances on me as I lay flat on my back, staring up at him wide-eyed, realizing how big of a mistake I've made thinking I could handle a seven-foot-tall, muscle-bound wolf. Huh. Okay, so when he says he was looking down, he must, have, he must have been sitting or something. I wonder if he's going to come at me with a pipe, but he throws it to the side. He starts to lean over me, still snarling. You little prick! This time I'll bind you up to your shoulders! How does that sound? He grabs up one of my arms, trying to pull me up, but I go limp. Get up! Otherwise I'll make you! He grabs my other arm. That's when I notice his wide stance over me and a particular bulge between his legs. I hardly think about it. Drawing back one foot, I launch... I launch it as hard as I can into his cross. Oh, yep, that does it. I feel a distinctly soft form get flattened under my foot as it gets trapped between the force of my kick and the substantial weight of Amicus's body. If there was any doubt in my mind that this male alien would be affected any differently compared to a, hum to a male human, his reaction quashed it. Amicus freezes, eyes go wide, hunching over me even further while his thighs snap together, trapping my foot. We both stay frozen for an awkward length of time as I stare at what I'd just done. And that's when I see that device hanging around his waistband, the one he'd been using to knock me out. I struggle to pull my foot free of the surprisingly tight embrace of his thighs, while at the same time, pulling my, same time pulling my hands out of his now limp grasp. I reach for his waist, grabbing the device. Amicus, probably distracted by the unexpected snut shot, doesn't seem to notice, and I finally yank my foot free. As I stumble to my feet, the alien half-heartedly grabs at, grabs at me, and I struggle against his paws before reaching for his red cape and pulling it over his head. Amicus finally stumbles back, one paw flying to his crotch and the other, the other struggling with his cape as he stays bent over, mouth hanging open, making a weird gasping sound like he was holding his breath. I look at the device in my hands, desperately trying to understand how to use it. A glass panel takes up most of the face of the device, like a phone, but two metal prongs stick out, stick out on one end. I frantically push at the screen and it comes to life, displaying a vertical bar. About a tenth of it is filled from the bottom with a light blue color. I push it out with my thumb, waiting for something to happen, for the electricity to start arcing between the prongs or something. Instead, the bar fills with the slide of my thumb. I push it all the way up until the color turns a dark violet. Nope. I hear a snarl and see Amicus finally tear the cape off before he comes at me again, one paw still over his cross, the other reaching out for me. I don't have time to think. I just duck under his approaching paw and press the prongs as hard as I can into his body. It sinks into his stomach, and I hear the wolf make a huff sound into my ear. There's a pause as nothing seems to happen. Then I press harder and squeeze the device, and the result is instant. 
There's no sound, but Namekus' body ceases violently, shaking as if he's having a seizure. The muscles in his stomach tense harden to push the device back out a few inches. I hold it there, not wanting to let up in case it isn't enough, in case he'll just recover and come at me again. After a few seconds, the wolf seizing and shuddering stops on its own. I start to pull back and get a glimpse of Amicus's face. His muzzle hangs open, foam and drool hanging from his chin, his eyes rolling back in his head. It's a scary sight, so I try to back away and Amicus comes with me, the contact with the device having been the only thing keeping him balanced. His weight takes me down, and the next thing I know is that I'm flat on my back, struggling to breathe as Amicus's incredible weight crushes me into, a me into the metal deck. He practically envelops me with his soft, furry body, his big head resting on my chest. I stare down at him, watching as his black lips and eyelids twitch, his tongue hanging out as he makes sporadic snorting sounds. I gasp and strain as I spend the next minute working myself out from under him, grimacing as his foamy drool smears on my chest. Finally, I manage to break free of his dead weight and crawl a few feet away, spending a few moments catching my breath. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right there. That did not go very well for Amicus. <laughs> oh dear. Well, this is a rocky start to what is supposed to be a good friendship, I guess. I don't know. I don't know much about Ad Astra. Man, I, did not ex I didn't actually expect that. <sighs> don't fuck with us humans, man. We'll fuck right back with you. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!